Okay, I think we're I think we're good. So we're talking about the book, and so while you're doing the Soul Asylum tour, headlining tonight at Metro Local H opening up, you're also doing a book tour. That is correct. I did my first uh, book signing yesterday, and I should really know the name of the store. It was cool. They had cool stuff. I got a hip hop coloring book and some cool postcards. Happy Valentine's Day, by the way. Happy Valentine's Day. Nothing says romance like hanging in a car with a stranger. You got that right. (laughs) All right, so we were talking just before a little audio snafu uh, about thinking about putting all those lyrics together, revisiting what is now, it can't be four decades, 80s, 90s. Yeah, it probably is. Well, pretty close anyways. It's a long time. So, I mean... The youthful Dave Perner, the com- contemplative Dave Perner, the Dave Perner who's weathered tragedy and hard times, the romantic Dave Perner. You, you kind of had to walk through all of that. Yeah, they're all they're all in there. All my multiple personalities. You know, I, I, the word survivor in rock and roll is thrown around a lot, as is icon and all that. But I really do think you are a rock and roll survivor, and that's not to say that I don't know. It, it's not like a nostalgic thing. You, you're still cranking out music. You've got a new album out in April. That's correct. The first song I heard from that, um, was it Dead Letter? Uh, yep. All right. There's, it's It sounds to me like if Nick Cave joined Simon and Garfunkel in 1966, there's kind of like a dark folk yep. vibe, like an Americana. Where, where was your head at when you put that one? I don't know, but I've heard that, uh, I mean, I, I like, uh, like, I, old Irish folk music and uh, that's probably where it, where it kind of comes from I mean I just think it's hilarious to walk into an Irish bar and see a sign that says Danny Boy 10 bucks <laughs> it makes me laugh because everybody wants this guy to play Danny Boy so he ain't gonna play it for free so I figure I'll just wear a sign around that says Runaway Train 10 bucks you know? was there a time when you didn't play Runaway Train where you just refused to do it there was. There was a couple of years there where I was like, ah, let's don't give the people what they want. And it, it kind of backfired. It just, it, people made me feel bad. And they're like, oh, we drove all the way from Alaska to hear our favorite song and you didn't play it. And that happened enough where I just felt like I was being an idiot, you know. Kind of a dick move. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, you know. I, I just thought, you know, we should challenge ourselves and make make more new songs that yeah people did not like that too much it seems like you've made your peace with grave dancers union as being kind of a, a touchstone for a lot of people I and mean, it still informs a lot of your set yeah and uh i am not ashamed i no. mean it's a good record it's a great <laughs> record it's funny when, when i posted online that we were going to be doing this lots of incredible responses and not more than or not less than a handful said I grew up with that. That was my high school experience. That was, you know, a transformative album for me. Yeah. For any artist to have one of those albums is incredible. For, for you to actually keep creating music that made a connection. Where'd all Yankovic covered you? That's true. That's a high watermark. That, that That's when I really knew I'd made it. <laughs> uh, he covered Misery. He covered Misery and Black Gold, I think. That's amazing. Syndicated Incorporated, I think is what yeah, he called it. Like talking about All in the Family and all the uh, syndicated TV shows. I saw him at a gig like a long, long time ago. Me and Danny were playing an acoustic set in San Francisco, and he was in the back of the crowd. And I just looked over at Danny and went, "Is that, is that weird, Al?" So yeah, he been he's been scoping us out for a while. Understandable. Now here we are uh, in an election year. It's hard to think about you and not think about the fact that you played Clinton's inauguration. Mm-hmm. Was that a weird time? I'm sure you had to be vetted by the Secret It was Service. cool. Well, yeah, they like speakers have something in them that um, bombs have in them also. So that was a little bit of a problem. But I had some weed in my pocket, so I was, I was in the Oval Office with weed in my pocket. Um, but, yeah, he was great. I mean, we made jokes and... It, it felt cool to be sort of included in the, what the day-to-day of the White House and stuff. So, uh, yeah. so Hurry Up and Wait is the album coming out in April. As a band, as a touring musician now in 2020, I feel like perhaps it, it has more in common with being a band when you were on Twin Tone back in the 80s than it did when you were a major label artist in 
the 90s. You're, you're, a lot more DIY, a lot more ground level activity, mm -hmm. and probably closer to the fans than you've ever been. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it's nice in a, I guess it's kind of a circular thing, but uh, it's all familiar territory, so <laughs> right. it's not, you know, nothing really surprises me no matter how how fancy it is or how terrible it is i've pretty much you know seen it all at this point soul sound is one of those bands when people talk about soul sound it's usually followed with oh my god you got to see him live your reputation as a live band has been unfailing through all these years it, what do you do you do you tour on the same set list do you mix it up night after night i know a lot of things have to be there yeah we mix it up more than ever actually uh and michael bland who's a force of nature behind the drums drummer extraordinaire he's the greatest uh former new power generation mm -hmm. old school minneapolis he makes the set list so he does not you mm -hmm, not me and uh he also started paying attention to the the internet so he now he's just trying to psych out the fans and Play, play something different every night and just sort of based on what kind of feedback he gets and stuff but yeah I don't I don't I've never made the set list I like to be surprised <laughs> so he, does he try to fuck with you like pull out a song that he knows you won't remember the lyrics to mm, he tries not to he tries to make sure that I know what I'm doing and uh, yeah he doesn't really let me get away with half ass and anything you know Weird question. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you're of, of an age now where you're seeing some of your peers get inducted. Is that something you aspire to or have an interest in? Not really. I mean, I think when we won uh, Best New Band in Minneapolis, we had we tied with Husker Du, and both bands had been around for like six <laughs> years or so, at least. Um, and it, it just seemed like sort of a charade to me. Um, so I've I made fun of it, kind of like it's not a sport, you know. The music is not supposed to be a competitive thing that you get a trophy for or whatever. Not to me, anyways. But on the other hand, I've had only great experiences through the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I mean, I got to play with Lou Reed, I got to play with Iggy Pop, I got to meet Johnny Cash and Al Green and James Brown and all these people that you know I never would have met otherwise. So. I can't really complain about it. Um, so, I mean, it's interesting, you know. I don't know if we'll, we'll ever be eligible or whatever, but... You're perfectly happy floating on the periphery. Yeah. I'm an outsider, man. That's right. That's rock and roll. It's punk rock. Uh, speaking of the new album, the timing of the song, If I Told You, couldn't be better. We're sitting here in a car. It's 17 degrees outside in Chicago. I can't wait another day for summer to come. I miss the sun something that I try to overcome. Dave Perner, you're one of us. Oh, yeah. Minnesota. Yeah, you're you're in New Orleans. You've been in New Orleans for a I've been in New Orleans for 17 years, but now I'm back spending a lot more time in Minneapolis due to uh, a divorce. Uh, so I got a kid down there, and I still got a place down there. But, uh, yeah, this will be my second winter in Minneapolis. Good time to go on the road. Get well, out of town. I mean, it's even I, colder here. <laughs> I mean, we went to Dallas the other, not that long ago, and it was colder than Minneapolis. But I try not to let the weather affect my my sunny attitude. But uh, it does, that song does play, it plays well in the winter. <laughs> well, it is funny. Your songs have a, a brightness to them and kind of cheery, but lyrically, like, the apocalypse figured into the last album. Mm -hmm. the end of the world so I, I kind of like putting that, that medicine in, in the sweetness that you do you, you've got kind of up tempo stuff and you're, you're getting kind of heavy and dark that's right it's, you've got the yin and yang the world is uh, coming to an end so it's time to party there are times when I think you know what just let the asteroid come we're asking right? for it I mean, bring it on all right, I, I know you're about to turn into a pumpkin. I have to return you to sound check. Uh, Dave Perner of Soul Asylum. Soul Asylum tonight at Metro. Uh, as previously mentioned, 
an incredible live band. Uh, hometown favorites, Local H, an enduring, fantastic band opening up. They're currently on the road with Soul Asylum. Uh, thank you for doing this. Thank you for jumping in the car. Thank you, man. I know it's a little weird. We're going to record a record in here. It's relatively soundproof, unless, <laughs> unless a fire truck goes by. All right, thank you for doing this. Thanks, man. Uh, Carcon Carney, sponsored by CNH Financial Services, Soul Asylum. They ruled <coughs> a new album out in April. The book is out now, right? Yep. Yep. I've seen it. I signed it. <laughs> All right, read the book. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I'm going to make this stop. <laughs>